Okay, there we go. Um, I think you should be able to see well enough with that. Um, so, one thing we did talk about this, uh, what you're doing. The reason I got that screwdriver poking out of the top of this uh, vertical cylinder, this is my most accurate um, top dead center gauge. What you do when you've got your motor at top dead center on the horizontal cylinder, just like the guy shows you when you're changing the belts, okay? You, you, what you're going to do is you take, put it at top dead center on the, on the, the horizontal cylinder, then you're going to pull the belts off, okay? Um, I pull both of the belts off um, for both cylinders. Then what I did is I put it in third gear. I like to use third gear personally. You've got no compression. You've got both of the, the um, your spark plugs out. Um, I turn the wheel um, backwards, okay? Back it up, and you, you've got a screwdriver in through the spark plug hole, and you're gonna, you're gonna watch this. You're gonna, you're gonna rotate it. I think it's what, 270 degrees, I think they said. Um, and you're gonna watch this screwdriver coming up out of the hole. Just turn it real slow, just kind of bump it, you know, so make sure your screwdriver doesn't get bound up in there or anything, but you're just gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna push the screwdriver up. Okay, once you see it go over top dead center, it's gonna start to come back down again. Then bump it forward a couple times, get it real close to right at the top, and then come over here on this side of the motor, the left side of the motor, you can see through the little window and there's gonna be a little timing mark for the vertical cylinder. There's a little indent and you're gonna see that um, center that in the window and you know you're on top dead center for this vertical cylinder. And the reason you're doing that is just to adjust the valves on this cylinder, all right? And the reason you do that, when you take these cams out and then you take, you take, um, you take the cams out, you take a, an opening rocker out, then you take the, you, if you take the, um, the shims out and the closer shim, the valve's gonna drop. Well, by having this motor, they're, they're this cylinder at top dead center, the valve's only going to drop just a little ways. You're not going to drop it into the motor. If this thing is not sitting at top dead center, you're going to have to use those hokey clamps and all that stuff or a zip tie or whatever around your valve so you don't lose it into the motor. I mean, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but you're going you're gonna to end up having to pull ahead. And, the, and the, um, I'm not opposed to doing that even for these valve adjustments, except it's you're pulling the exhaust off, you got to pull the heads off. You got head gaskets, base gaskets, all that shit's expensive. So um, if you don't have leaky, you know, leaky base gaskets, head gaskets, there's no reason to take them apart. Um, so get this to top dead center, adjust these valves, then take the rear wheel, rotate it again, and you can use still use a screwdriver trick on the on the horizontal cylinder. Rotate it again a little bit, nice bump, 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 bump. Get it back to top dead center on the horizontal cylinder. Then you can adjust the valves on this one and reinstall your belts. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make this real quick. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on feeler gauges. I think um, everybody, there's enough good information out there on doing that. But like on the last video I showed you, he checks it between the between the cam lobe and the the, the rocker. Okay, it's I, I I'm going to do it. I like doing it. It's 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 real easy to feel it. It's straight shot. I'm going to go between the between the opening rocker and the top of the valve stem, which is where the, the, um, the opening shim sits. Okay, I got five thousandths, okay? Um, I know my cam's not, okay, I got five thousandths right there. A six thousand won't fit, a four thousand is too loose, I got five thousandths, okay? That's, that's my opening, that's my opening shim, and that is my unloaded um, measurement right there, okay? Check the other side, same thing, I got five thousandths, okay? I know that, I already did it. So then now what you're going to do, this is the tricky part. You're going to do the loaded, get the loaded me me measurement. A lot of guys will take, they've got, one guy's got a cool video on YouTube. He made his own special tool. He goes in there and he pushes down and he, and he, 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 he loads down the, the closing rockers, both of them at the same time. I think you would lose a little bit of feel with that. I mean, it's a cool tool. It's a beautiful piece of work that he made, but... I think you lose a little bit of feeling trying to trying to push them both down. Some guys will take a quarter inch drive socket and push down on it. There's a special tool you can buy. Guys are using a screwdriver. And what you're doing is you're pushing down, okay? Just like in the last video we watched, you're pushing down. There's a spring in there. There's just a small spring that, um, that, that, that keeps pressure. It keeps that closing rocker in that position, okay? So you push down on that, right? And then that's where you're gonna get your measurement. So mine, same thing. So that's just moving a little bit. But what, what you got to be careful of is you don't want to tear, you don't want to slip off that thing and compromise 
your valve guide seal, okay? Well, I got a little bit easier way to do that. And there's another video on there, but on YouTube, but you can't see it very well. And the guy has a compressor running in the background. It's funny, but he's the one that, that originally gave me the idea. He has it on there. Um, I made a comment and nobody's really made many, um, doesn't even have a lot of views. Uh, it's a, it's, it's just, I mean, it's kind of a poor quality video, but the guy nailed it when he talks about how you, how you check the loaded, the, the, you get your loaded measurement. What he does, you take a, an, an Allen key, right? You put it between the cam and the opening rocker, and you just lever that down, okay? That's all it is, right there. It does, you don't have to wail on it, you don't have to push very hard, that's it. You just barely move it, that, oops, that is all you need to do, and then you take your measurement to get your loaded, your loaded measurement. But, you've gotta do it between, now you, by doing this, you, you, you've just compressed all of this together. You can't get that measurement, um, the only place you can get the measurement is between the cam lobe and the opening rocker, okay? Slide it right in there. Put your feel gauge. Nice and easy. See that? 10,000. A little bit too, a little bit too loose. Flip this around. 10 doesn't fit. I'll grab an 11. We'll try that. Um, okay. Oh yeah, that's nice. Just barely got some drag on. Okay, it's 11. So you subtract your 5,000s from your unloaded from 11 on your loaded. That's, I have six thousandths on my closer. That's too big. I need to take all this apart, I need to pull the cams out, and I need to change my closer shim. Um, I've tried, I saw a guy in there doing, checking his valves when he had his, he had these, these outboard bearings on his camshaft, and he just set them in there. Then he would check them, and then he would make a change, and then put them back in. I checked my, checked these measurements, not having these tightened down, and I got a completely different measurement than when I put these cams in and put these put these um, five millimeter bolts back in. Have your cams locked down before you check those. Um, I don't think you're gonna get an accurate measurement if you don't do that. Um, something to think about. Um, so anyways, that's how you do your, your, your um, you check those. Then what you're gonna do, if you need to make an adjustment, let me grab the camera. All right, if you're gonna need to, if you're gonna need to pull your cams out, slam this thing back, back over here. If you pull your cams out, what you're gonna do, um, make a tool like this. Here's a piece of, uh, some stuff I had in my steel pile. It's just a piece of tubing and it fit over one of these, uh, one of these rocker shafts. There's a guy that has a, there's some, you, you, a guy uses, a, um, I think it's a 5 8 inch um, socket will work. We'll go over there. Um, just something that slides over that shaft. Get, um, this is actually five millimeter bolt right here. Um, pretty long, a couple inches long, longest one you can find. Put this, it threads into the end of the rocker shaft, okay? So anyways, Lots of information out there. I don't need to walk you through this tool. You'll, you'll, you'll be able to find information on this tool. It's not that big of a deal. But the top two shafts are your, um, the opening rockers, the bottom two shafts down here are for the closing rockers. But what you do on this side of the cam, the cam that has the pulleys on it, pull this thing out of here. Crank this thing, you know, pull this, um, pull this rocker shaft out. And what it's gonna do is your, the, the, um, the opening, opening rocker is gonna drop in there. And then once that thing drops out of the way, take these two bolts out, pull the cam out. That's all there is to it. Easy, easy. Then you can get in there and you can see what you got. Um, make any adjustments that you need to make on the opening or the closing shims. Put your cam back in there. Reach back in there. You know, um, what you'll do is you'll have that opening rocker kind of resting in there where it needs to go, just over to the side of the valve. And then, um, and then you can, you know, wiggle it around, line it up, take a, take a nice um, hammer and drive that... Uh, drive that, that pin back in there and you're all good to go. Um, I do all of mine in thousands um, because all of my tools, the only reason why um, I do, I do that, all of my measuring tools that I've had forever, you know, I've got this old Toyo um, micrometer, um, measures in inches, um, my my steered dial 
the caliper is uh, um, measures in inches. So it doesn't make any difference whether you're measuring, whether you're doing this in, you know, inches or if you're doing it, um, if you're using the, the millimeters, whatever you have to take measures. Here is the shim kit that you can get from uh, EMS. And it's every two, so I just converted everything over instead of using millimeters. So um, this is every two thousands. So if you take this thing out, I already had to make one adjustment. You take something out, what's cool about it is it's two thousands. So if you have a sh if you take a measurement and your valve is six thousandths and you want it four, you need to put, you need to, you need to step it up two thousandths bigger. So you, bam, you go right to there. You just, you'd, you'd pull that, you'd pull the shim out that you've got, you've measured it. If I've got a, if I've got a 0. .114, then I would want to put a 0. .116 in next. You drop the 114 in there, you grab the 116 out of there, you just close the gap, bam, you, you, and, and you move right along through your shim kit. So this is pretty sweet. Um, I would highly recommend picking one of those babies up if you're going to actually ride your bike. So um, I hope that was helpful. Um, oh, another thing I just wanted to mention real quick. I think one of the, I don't know if I got the only bike out here that has the crappiest cam lobes to ever leave a factory or if this is really a, if it's a common thing I would not be surprised if it led to uh, if, if that's part of the problem when with the with the chrome flaking off the rockers let me bring up this picture real quick because I've got all my cams out I've got my cams covered but this let me show I just took a picture of it um, the cam lobes, these, this is what my cams look like when I took it out of the bike, right? So look at the pitting on this stuff. These things that look like they're sand cast. I can't believe it. I've seen a lot of cam lobes in my days. I've never seen anything like that. That's what my cams look like when I took it out of the bike, okay? Here is a cam that I worked on for a while, spent some time on it. Um, do what you want, but I went through and spent some time and polished those cam lobes. I can't imagine any chrome holding up to that, turning, you know, thousands of times per second over and over and over and over, over 6,000 miles. No wonder the chrome flaked off. Uh, so what I did, I've got some, uh, some polishing stones, and I've got... Um, Maybe I'll just show you what I did real quick. You guys can decide whether or not you want to do it or not. But I've got some wet stones. Here's a cam right here that I worked on. Um, it's basically for sharpening knives. I've got a coarse stone, a medium stone, and a fine stone. This, the coarse stone didn't even work. It was too abrasive. I used a medium stone, and um, I laid it flat on there, and I just kind of went around and just slowly... It took a while. I got four hours in these things, slowly polishing them. Then I did the fine stone. Um, went through same thing real slowly polished them real careful radius and around those things and then I used some three some three uh, 320 emery paper and kind of put the polish to them so um, You know, that's a That's a personal call whether or not you, you want to spend the time doing that the only thing you got to be careful obviously you can't really get busy in one spot and not keep it pretty consistent on that whole radius you go in there to check it with your feeler gauge it doesn't take much sanding and filing to, you know, to, to throw something off more than a thousandth of an inch, right? A thousandth, you know, variation, it's not really going to matter. You need to kind of, you know, make sure you're, you, you've got your play there. But um, I've heard different stories about why the chrome flakes off on these 996s. They say it's, just, you know, they didn't prep the, the steel before they chromed it. Other guys say it's the nature of the, of the way the valves, you know, slam open, slam closed. And I personally think that it might have a little bit to do with the surface on that cam lobe. Um, I polished mine. Do what you want. Uh, so, anyways, there you go. Hopefully that was, uh, you got something from it. Helped you, uh, you know, wrap your head around this whole Ducati uh, valve adjustment. Um, hopefully it helps somebody. So, anyways, yeah, couldn't be happier to be owning a Ducati personally. Uh, looking forward to get out there and hammering some miles down this, this summer. So, Cool. Peace out. Good luck, everybody. Got any questions? Um, let me know.